include additional material on the subject of this special order. Without objection, so ordered. Madam Speaker, I rise today joined by a good group of colleagues and legislators here in the House to commemorate the 105th anniversary of granting the U.S. citizenship of, to the people of Puerto Rico and to reaffirm our commitment to full equality for the island's 3.2 million Americans, which can only be achieved through statehood. And many people will ask how long we've been part of the United States. After the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico, before that, Puerto Rico was part of Spain. And after the Spanish-American War, we, we became a possession, a territory of the United States in, in 19, 1898. Then in 19, uh, um, 1906, President Theodore Roosevelt called on Congress to confer American citizenships to, to Puerto Ricans. Legislation was introduced uh, to those effects between 1912 uh, and 1913 which was supported by President William Howard Taft and then the Wilson administration. President Wilson had even campaigned in 1912 uh, to, on a promise to ensure U.S. citizenship uh, for Puerto Ricans. On this day, March 2nd, President Woodruff Wilson signed the jones shafroff Act, which extended statutory U.S. citizenship to the residents of the island. While the jones shafroff Act will not be the last time Congress act, acted on a question of uh, citizenship, actually, then in 1940, uh, the Nationality Act conferred birthright uh, citizenship to persons born in Puerto Rico. The signing of the 1917 law cemented our relationship as an integral part of the United States. For 150 years, Puerto Ricans have been proud American citizens, and we, be, we have contributed greatly to this country. In every field of endeavor, we even have Supreme Court judges, a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, and many others in, in many areas. We proudly upheld and defend the ideals that define our nation, including more than 235,000 Puerto Ricans who have honorably served in the U.S. Armed Forces, fighting side by side with our fellow citizens uh, from the states. Yet, despite our contributions, despite our long-standing commitment to the values that come with being an American citizen, the reality is that we are still not equal. That's a real, uh, the reality of Puerto Ricans every day. And then you have 3.2 million Americans living on the island and more than 5 million living on the mainland. That tells you that because of the current territorial status, Americans in Puerto Rico lack full voting representation in this Congress. For example, I do represent people in this floor, but I cannot vote here for any measure that affects my island. I do the job of at least four members of Congress. We do not have senators that can be the voice of Puerto Rico because they are not elected on the island. And yet, we need to apply all federal laws to the island, but without having a say or a vote on each of them. Our people cannot vote for our president, our commander in chief, and we have no say in the federal decision making process, which impact every aspect of our lives. Even though we are US citizens and the federal government can and often does treat the island unequally under federal laws and programs. And while it is true that Congress could pass legislation today to address some of those disparities, it is similarly true that any future Congress could undo such efforts. And when you revise our Constitution, specifically territorial clause of the U.S. Constitution, Article 4, Section 3, it says specifically that the Congress shall have the power to dispose and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. And yet we are the most powerful nation on earth still having a colony in the Caribbean for more than 105 years. And that's the reason because we are a territory 
we will be always at Congress mercy. And as a territory, we will never, may, never truly enjoy the same rights and responsibilities as our fellow citizens in the states. Only statehood can guarantee your full equality as U.S. citizens. And that's why the people of Puerto Rico have voted to reject the current territorial status, not once, not twice, three times in a row, and to be admitted as a state of the union. Most recently, in November, uh, November of 2020, when a clear majority, an absolute majority of the people, 73% of the people voted in that election. Of those 73% of the people who voted, 53% voted for statehood. That's an absolute majority. So you don't have any delegates, you don't have any mail. This is direct votes, in-person votes uh, of the people of the island asking for a statehood. Even statehood got more votes than any uh, 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 politician on the island. Statehood got more votes than any party, political party on the island. So that means that's the biggest consensus ever on the island three times in a row. And as we commemorate 105th anniversary of our American citizenship, it is crucial that Congress act to end Puerto Rico's undemocratic territorial status and to respond to our vote for equality through statehood. I'm proud to have partnered with Congressman Darren Soto, our brother from Florida, to introduce bipartisan legislation to achieve this using H.R. 1522, the Puerto Rico Statehood Admission Act, uh, that will make a formal offer of statehood. Never before Congress even asked the people of Puerto Rico whether we want to continue as a territorial colonial status or we want to achieve statehood or independence. This will be the first time ever this question will be made to the people on the island coming from Congress in a binding process. Same thing happened in Hawaii, same thing happened in Alaska. They were asked a simple question. You want to become a state of the union, yes or no? That same question was a referendum we held locally in Puerto Rico by the local laws with that majority. And, and to say that this bill will make a formal offer of statehood outlining a clear process to enable the island's admission into the union and should it be ratified by Puerto Rican voters in a federally sponsored yes or no referendum. Having said that, I think it is time, it's long overdue, that we resolve the Puerto Rican uh, unfinished democracy business. And with that, I would like to yield.